All right, so here's a second example of a uh, single photograph HDR. Uh, this one's a lot more dramatic than the previous example because in this case, the dynamic range of the original scene is much higher. And by that, I mean the range of light between the brightest portion of the photograph, which in this case is the setting sun, and, and the rest of the photograph, which is the complete landscape, is very high. And so for this photograph, I wanted to, fo I wanted to expose specifically for the sun. I didn't want to have, I mean, the sun itself, of course, the, the core of the brightness from the sun is going to be, uh, is going to be uh, blown out here and clipped. But I didn't want the surrounding clouds that the, the sun was uh, diffusing this light onto to be clipped. And so I definitely expose heavily to uh, keep as much of the sky within clipping as possible which, uh, for this case, dramatically underexposed the foreground because, again, the, the sun is being diffused by these clouds. Not much sunlight is reaching, uh, or not as much sunlight is reaching the foreground. And since I've exposed for the sun, I've, I've aggravated that by having the, the foreground being underexposed even more. And so in this case, you can see here my exposure was an F8. I think I used the hyperfocal distance, so I focused somewhere about um, a third of the way into the photograph. And I used a very fast shutter speed, again, so that I could... Uh, keep the clipping at a minimum to the sky with the expectation that I'm going to be uh, pushing the shadows in post, which is what I'm about to do. So you can see here on the left is the original photograph. On the, on the right is the uh, HDR-like uh, result of my changes. So you can see here there's a lot of difference in contrast between this photograph and the, the previous example I've shown just because the original contrast and dynamic range of the scene was much higher. And so there's a lot more compression going on, which gives it a bit more of that HDR look where you have some of that tonality, which looks a little bit surreal and not as uh, realistic. But again, this was what was required to get the, uh, the, the, uh, the tonal range compressed and within the dynamic range that can be displayed. Um, and so I'll show you the steps that I used to get from uh, this original photograph to the, the actual result that you see here. So go ahead and revert the photograph again back to its original form. And so uh, the previous example, I used a uh, gradient filter in order to lift the shadows. In this case, I'm actually going to use a, the fill light because I want to lift the shadows across the entire photograph, not just for one section, uh, because I want to lift it for both this foreground here as well as some of the parts of the sky that uh, are a bit underexposed as well. And so what the fill light does, let me get to here, what the fill light does is increase the exposure selectively to the parts of the image that are within the shadows or the lower midtones. And so it's not going to increase the exposure for this part because you certainly don't need it because this is already at clipping. You just want to increase the shadows, uh, increase the exposure for the shadows in the midtone area. And so when I increase the fill light, I'm actually going to increase it all the way to the maximum that Lightroom allows. You can see here that the brightness of all the uh, shadow and midtone areas are increasing, but none of the brightness around that sun is really increasing. Now, the alternative to using fill light is to use just the regular exposure compensation, which increases the exposure of the entire image. And you can see here it doesn't produce the result we want because it completely blows out the sun and the sky while only slightly elevating the exposure of the foreground since the foreground is so much underexposed relative to the sun and the sky. And so we really want to just... Uh, let me revert just back to zero for the exposure. So we really just want to increase the, the fill light all the way to uh, 100, which is the maximum. Now, as far as how many stops of light this fill light is equal to, uh, I'm roughly guessing the 100% fill light is equal to about five or six stops of uh, exposure compensation. That's just a rough guess. I may be even off by an order of magnitude or two, but uh, that's a huge push. And so you, you saw how dark this was um, uh, let me go here. You saw how dark this was before I applied the fill out. Basically, it's, it seemed like the photograph was gone and unrecoverable. But you can see all the detail and color that's retained. Again, this is another D7000 photograph, so another great demonstration of the incredible dynamic range. And so in this case, I'm pushing by much more than the original photo uh, that I showed in the first example. That had a push of about three and a half stops. Here I've pushed by up to about five or six stops. And there's certainly a lot more noise that's been introduced here, but still well within, uh, for me at least for this photograph, well within the acceptable uh, range. And I can sort of offset this noise by applying some new, uh, luminance noise reduction, and I'll do that as well. But still, the photograph to me is quite usable for uh, an 8x10 print or, or smaller, and maybe even slightly larger depending on uh, the additional post-processing I, I do on this photo. And so I've, I've gone ahead and increased the, the brightness of the shadows. What I next want to do is decrease the brightness of the uh, sky, because I want to create some local contrast to the foreground. So I'll go ahead and create another gradient, and this time I'll create a gradient filter, and I'm going to go ahead and reduce the exposure 
by about uh, two and a half stops. And let me see, I want to see where I want this. Again, just like in the, uh, the first demonstration, this exposure compensation is, uh, or adjustment is being applied most to where the origin of the gradient tool starts and then it tapers off as you get further away. And again, this is, that'll nicely abut to the shadow areas that I've already pushed in the foreground. And so what I also want to do here is I want to increase the contrast because this is kind of flat in the sky. So I want to go ahead and keep, uh, increase the contrast, which will also serve to uh, darken a little bit more, but more to just to increase the range of, uh, of brightness between the bright area of the sky and the background. And I'm also going to bump up the saturation as well, get a little bit more blue. So you can see here, when I've done that, is even though this, this ends here, you can see a little bit of the, the, the gradient filter sort of ends here, it still tapers off in through this region here. So I've, I've decreased the brightness of the foreground a little more than I want. And so what I'm going to do is create a new gradient filter. And I'm going to set, I'm going to do about maybe a stop. And I'm going to paste this over. So I've already filled the foreground by uh, about five stops with the fill light. And now I'm refilling it to offset the adjustment I did for the, uh, the sky gradient filter. And so you can see here, maybe I can use a little bit more. So now you can see the photograph has taken on a, a look of a lot more HDR type look where there's a lot more tonal compression and, uh, and a lot less contrast because of that. And so it, it sort of has that look to it. Uh, in this case, I, I think it sort of works. I like the way the photograph came out. Um, but again, it depends on a particular photograph what, uh, how much compression and how much pushing is going to work and be accept acceptable for that photograph. Um, I can still see, I want to reduce the, uh, the brightness of the, of the sun a little bit. And I can do that a couple of ways. I can use the, the highlight area, the highlight slider, and, and reduce it that way. But I think that's going to reduce the contrast a little more than I want to. So I'm going to go ahead and use the recovery tool, which is normally used to reduce clipping. And there's not much clipping here. As you can see, I've turned on the clipping, and there, there's not much there. So I'm really just going to use this as just another way to uh, reduce the top edge or range of highlights, which are at the very most right of the, of the histogram. And so that's pretty much done as far as the HDR type kind of uh, adjustments I want to make. You can see here there's some lens flare here and here that I can, I can, uh, I can uh, paste out. But the, the first thing I notice as well is this, this photograph is not level. So I'm going to go ahead and use, this, uh, use the level adjustment and go ahead and make it so that uh, it's level. And, the, and how I'm determining its level is, you can see here when I press the mouse button, you get a grid and you can look and see how far the horizon is from the, the line in the grid, which is about here, and, and you can match that so that the distance between the horizon from one edge to the next is about equal. And so there, that is about uh, level. And then what I also want to do is there's some um, curvature based upon the lens characteristics. This is the 18105 kit lens shot at 18. And so I want to reduce that. And so the Lightroom has a built-in profile. Uh, I think the, the newest release candidate has a profile for the 18105. So you can see here without the profile, and then with the profile, you can see it's sort of taken out of that, taken that barrel distortion out of there uh, and made it much more level. Because a lot of times, the, what looks like an unlevel photograph is just a, a barrel distortion effect. And so that's pretty much it. Here's just another example of the HDR. This photograph could certainly use a lot more work. I can perhaps add some more uh, local contrast to this uh, to the skyline. This is uh, Las Vegas, by the way. And so this is the strip you see here, and this is out facing west. Um, and these are all some local houses in the Henderson suburb. But again, just another idea how you can take a single photograph that appears to be underexposed, but you're doing it that way specifically in order to uh, stretch the shadows and create a, a high dynamic range from a, a, a single photograph.